friends, after knowing some basics of some remote sensing, we shall go ahead further how exactly we get satellite image and make use of it further and let us equip ourselves with a little more information. Now, how exactly we collect the data from the sensor? I once again invite your memory. We have just now mentioned what is passive remote sensing, what is active remote sensing. It is a passive remote sensing that a record a reflected solar energy collected data only on a descending pass, ascending, descending pass. We have so active sensor which provide their own source of the energy can also acquire image on ascending or descending because they have I have a torch. If sunlight is there, I can use my torch, but it is of no use. In my dark, I can use my torch. So, therefore, whether it is a shadow ascending or descending, they are able to capture the information. Now, in this process, I have to remember SWAT. Suppose I have that if I have a satellite it is going to cover this much of area and when satellite passes this much area continuously it scans that is the swath. As the satellite revolves around the earth the sensor sees a certain part of the earth portion of the earth surface. The area is known as the swath. The sensor is able to scan only this much part and that is the swath. The swath of a satellite image is very large between tens to hundreds of a kilometer wide. What is the advantage of this? I am able to see. And when tomorrow I fly like this and this much area I am covering, day after tomorrow and this much area, some other day this much area, some other day like this. After certain regular say 20 days, 30 days, whatever, I can come to the same. Today I am here, tomorrow I am here, day after tomorrow here, 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 again come back to the same position. So, as the satellite orbit the earth from a pole to pole, its uh, east to west, sorry, its east west position would not change. We have here to here, its east and west do not change. If the earth did not rotate, if earth is stationary, this also should be same. However, as seen from the earth, it seems that the satellite is shifting westward. Well, earth is rotating from west to east. We feel that it is shifting. This apparent movement allows the satellite swath to cover a new area. I have earth stationary to cover earth. I have to move in a different, but if earth is moving like this and satellite captures a different part of the earth get into. I have a satellite, I have a satellite here say this part is scanned, tomorrow earth rotates, this part is scanned, tomorrow earth rotates, this part is scanned, tomorrow earth rotates, this part is scanned. Although this is stationary, because of the effect of rotation of the earth, different parts of the earth come to the light position and thus captured. The time to complete one orbit is called the satellite period. It is here, tomorrow here, 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 here and after some period at the same position. Today here, 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 here like that. After some period, it comes to the same position that is called period. For example, today light is emitting on this part of the earth. Light is source is same. Earth rotates. Now this part of the earth is illuminated. Tomorrow this part of the earth is illuminated. Day after tomorrow this part of the earth is illuminated. Day after tomorrow this part. It means energy source is same, but because of rotation of the earth, different part of the earth gets energy exposed and the same. Now in this case it is every fourth day it is coming in front of the light or energy. 
it is because the effect of rotation of the earth and to complete one rotation and back to the same position satellite may require different that is called the period now i have a satellite image how exactly i identify different features from the satellite image now remember active or passive remote sensing i have to keep in mind the swath i have to keep in mind the period of rotation i have to keep in mind then only i will able to make use of example if the period of this coverage come back to the same position once in 18 days every 18 days i get the picture of the same area what has happened in between 18 days i am able to gather at the end of 18 day there are satellites every alternate day cover the same area for example there are satellites this area they have scanned and after the 40 48 or not 28 or 48 hours the same area they cover every alternate they cover means the same areas photographed in every 48 days scanned in every 48 days sensed in every 48 days that is depends on that i am able to make use of that change as an input to understand so many earth processes this i have to keep this in mind four main types of information contained in an optical image when we get the satellite image in that uh, cd many informations are provided i have to read those informations so carefully four main type of information obtained in the optical images are the radiometric information that is a brightness intensity tone these are the important i am going to make use in understanding the earth surface features interpretation example i give if a sand body it reflects perfectly white and moisture content it is dark or gray color we call this a tone those are all important information for me then a spectral information that is a color spectral information based on that i am going to understand whether it's a vegetation it is a soil or it is a water body like that textural information is another important feature geometrical and contextual information is these are useful to identify different object and then the resolution what is the ability of the sensor to interpret example a boat of a 5 meter length it is able to capture but if a material less than 5 meter the sensor is not able to identify ability of the sensor that we call a resolution there it all depends on are reflected in a, we call a pixel that is a satellite able to understand body of a 5 meter resolution not less than 5 meter this reflects the ability of the sensor and we call it the resolution resolution there are different types of resolution again now just now i have mentioned the swath this is the swath of the image when they capture pass through the same i have presented in this okay now the resolution is one is the spectral resolution spatial resolution radiometric resolution temporal resolution different types what exactly we mean resolution is the broad term for different types of resolution spectral specific wavelength interval that a sensor can record broadly i can understand only three red is vegetation green is a water body and like that so if i am able to capture only three different different colors but 
if i am say red all is vegetation for me coconut is also vegetation paddy is vegetation natural forest is vegetation and how i am this uh, sugarcane that's also vegetation but how do i understand this is sugarcane this is coconut or this is natural vegetation one within the coconut plantation how i am able to this is the healthy coconut plant this unhealthy coconut plant further classification in the natural vegetation people map species variation what is a species variation this is a kind of tree this is another kind of tree this is another kind of tree we are able to distinguish a different type of tree species this is uh, like this teak this is people this is acacia we people say this is eucalyptus because each plant or this is the paddy or sugarcane like that each plant has a different chlorophyll level i am mapping that chlorophyll content the paddy has a different the sugarcane has different the teak has a different eucalyptus has a different therefore based on the chlorophyll variation i am able to map this is one i am able to distinguish different this is a spectral wavelength characteristic space one again in the sugarcane itself entire hundreds acre is a sugarcane but within that some part of the field there may be some disease affected again they reflect a different level of energy yes within that these are all this can be resolved based on the spectral characteristics you know what then a spatial area on the ground represented by each pixel i just now mentioned this is depends on how much area it can cover this is a swat now the sensor has ability to detect a body just now i mentioned 5 meter a material less than 5 meter satellite is not able to recognize it but more than 5 meter it is able to recognize so that is its ability to understand material on the ground that is called spatial resolution resolution that is represented by pixel when i say pixel is 4 by 4 pixel 10 by 10 pixel 23 by 23 it means 5 by 5 object i can distinguish 23 meter by 23 meter means not less than 23 meter more than 23 meter i can but less than 23 meter i am not able to detect that is the meaning that is a spec that is a spatial resolution represented by pixel when i get the cd from nrc all those are available ready made a number of possible data file values in each band indicated by the number of bits into which the recorded energy is divided i have to understand the vegetation 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 different to vegetation i have a paddy here i have coconut here how i am able to distinguish that is a radiometric resolution that is this is broadly into 3 this is further into within a given then temporal how frequently data is obtained that is today i have obtained after 24 days again after 20 days means every 24 days i may obtain the information that is a, with a time temporal or every 5 days i may obtain i may or every alternate day i may obtain like this this is the frequency that is useful to understand the changes progressive changes happen if these are the different type of resolution i am interested i have to make you so now what exactly the spatial resolution further is important is based on that see a multi spectral image collects data and i am able to distinguish a different object instantaneous field of view determine the dimension d of the ground resolution so images of the ground when i uh, obtain that spatial resolution 
is important based on that my interpretation dependent in the sense there is one line my ability to interpret a satellite image is say uh, sorry the, uh, my ability to understand this is one line my sensor has pixel value 23 by 23 it means any object below 23 meter i am not able to observe but how do i observe the road so therefore there are other in addition to that i have simply defined spatial resolution this i have to consider and then i am able to even on the uh, road although it is 9 meter or 5 meter by 5 meter i am able to understand because i attach additional attribute to that spatial resolution then i interpret another is a temporal resolution with the time say in one season how much area was inundated by a reservoir in other season how much this part is not there at all and perhaps this part must be dry here there is no water body here so in january 2003 and april 2003 in between what has happened this water body must have been dried or water body spread larger area it has not spread that much of larger area this is basically a temporal resolution with the time how much change has occurred and i am able to say this is period this much of period so temporal resolution refers to how often the sensor obtains information about the same area just now i have mentioned once in 18 days once in 30 days once in 5 days depends on the speed of rotation therefore it is possible to get the image of the same part of the earth in a definite number of days that we call period this is a temporal resolution depends on that period once in 20 days or once in 16 days or whatever it may be so that is helpful to understand this kind of information changes that have taken place and it is useful for many years then panchromatic image it is a number of bands is generally only one that is only gray shade this is different levels of the same it is usually displayed as a gray scale image that is displayed by brightness very bright less bright or no bright this is the, that's all so brightness of a particular pixel it's a proportional to the pixel the digital number large high digital number low digital number low digital number therefore they look dark high digital number they appear bright it all correspond to energy reflected by that particular body i am measuring the energy or mapping trying to map the digital number dn number we call or pixel value also we call that is a kind of indication for me to understand different objects digital which is related to the intensity of solar radiation reflected by the body this is another important now whenever this is panchromatic images i have also people called pan image another one is a multi spectral image what do you mean by multi spectral a multi spectral image consists of several bands of data i can same photograph i can use water body i can see this water body this water body this vegetation bad land like this different kind of earth different features i can obtain the same and in a different color in the previous it is only gray shade here it is different several bands of data for visual display each band of the image may be displayed in one band for all this vegetation only red only all water body only blue color like that 
So, different for visual interpretation, if I have to show water body, only wherever that color is there, I mark it as a water body. This is useful for visual interpretation. Combination of three bands at a time as a color composite image. I have an image, this is color composite, combination of three I have, that is color composite image. To understand this, I need to have spectral reflectance signature of that object for their interpretation. The Fels color composite is allows vegetation to be detected readily in the image. Okay. In this type of a Fels color composite image, vegetation appears in a different shades of red. That is Fels color, that is multispectral face color composite, vegetation is not shown as a green but red. Since it has a high reflectance in the near infrared band. So, thus we have the face color composite spectral is a multispectral images are generally face color composite. In this case, the spectral information content of the image is utilized in the interpretation. In a displaying a color composite image, three primary colors red, green and blue are used that is ne? color composite, face color composite. When these three colors are combined in various proportion, they produce different colors in the visible spectrum and possible to understand different grown features. Associating each spectral band, not necessarily visible. Right? to a separate primary color result in a color composite. So, what is a phase color composite? The display color assigning for any band of multispectral image can be done in an entirely arbitrary manner. I can give vegetation a color of something. In this case, the color of a target in the displayed image does not have any resemblance to the actual color. Vegetation is green, but in the face color composite, I need not show vegetation as a green, I can show another color of my interest, arbitrary. Multispectral vegetation was red. When I process it, a true color composite, vegetation may be green, but in face color, I can give any, any color. So, so, this is any color arbitrarily based on our interest. Now, the resulting product is known as the face color composite image. There are many possible schemes of producing the face color composite image. However, some scheme may be more suitable for detecting certain objects. There also we have to follow a regular pattern. My communication should not be misunderstood by other person. If I show vegetation in some color, the other person should mean it. Therefore, any color for vegetation, etc., I cannot give. I have to follow universal or standard system and then I, it become a true color composite. What exactly true color composite? I show vegetation as a green, building as a white or some soil as something, water body as like that. So, it is a multispectral image consists of the three visual primary color, red, green, blue. The three bands may be combined to produce a true color image. Then in that true color image, I represent a respective object in a respective color. This is true color. Identify features using remote sensing data. So, four main types of information just now we have mentioned radiometric, spectral, textual, this we have already mentioned. Now, using this, I am able to use, remember friends, we use from the true color composite when I produce process, even I can go for supervised classification. Supervised classification means I have vegetation. Vegetation map I produce, true color composite, but whether that vegetation, natural vegetation, paddy field, sugarcane field or something other field, I need to have a supervised classification. Thus, for supervised classification, 
I need to have the ground coordinate which I can very well observe with the help of a GPS. When I come to GPS, I will tell how those other data are useful to produce supervised classification. Okay, this is an example of how satellite data are used to generate the, the map of a structure hills of, this is an example of Chitadurga. So, based on this, we have mapped certain features. For example, for Malaprabha, this is a pedi plane, how we have seen this actual ground, ground in the satellite image, how actually that is visible, how do they correlate. We have this color, you check this, then plus this cliff-like features. It is not just the color alone, the associated feature are also taken into consideration for interpretation and generation of a map. Yes. Now, see, this is the photograph that I have shown in the first or second module perhaps, the same this is the ground on which we have the dike. And when I closely go to that dike boulder I take. And in the satellite image it appears like this is the dike. How do exactly I do? What is the purpose of this? This is the ground feature I have photographed. I have taken my spectroradiometer, went to the, kept the spectroradiometer on this part. What is their spectral signature? Now, I have this satellite image, I see this feature like this on the ground. Now, what is the spectral signature of that? The spectral signature of here, the DN number of spectral signature, I try to compare, correspond. Yes, if my spectral signature here obtained, spectral radiometer observation on the ground and its features all, see how it appears, based on that, now, I am able to map and this is the dike which we find on the satellite image. Now, rock types also we can map. For example, these are all the quad sites of Saudati Hill. Quad site is a kind of rock which reflects a very high energy. It is a silica content as good as we can comparable to the sand on the beach we find. It is a bad land like that. It do not produce a soil, etc. So, soil cover free, quartzite, different from the granite knees or basalt. They reflect different levels of energy, different DNA number. Based on that, I can demarcate, map it. These are the quartzites of Saudati. How rock mapping is possible with the help of a satellite image. Yes. This is another, you know, these are the linear features what we find on the ground. These linear features is, linear feature, how I see? A river is almost a straight line. Maybe a hill ridge, a water body, a river or um, sharp contact between different material. It may be one kind of rock. This may be another kind of rock possible elevated hill, this is very, what happens if this is the ground condition. I have an observation center, it gives and receives higher energy, whereas here when it is distance is more and hang again energy received. When material is here and this moves here and we have distance more lesser energy reaches, lesser energy gets reflected, sensor collects lesser energy. And this is due to the undulation of the ground. Now, the sharp contact between this point and this point suddenly indicates this somewhere something elevated, sudden contrast could be faults. Yeah, we have discussed it that day, like in some other, like this sudden So, these are all the fault-like. So, this could be fault. Therefore, whether such kind of features are there on the ground, a river may be there, 
contrast in this rock type, this is one type of rock, this is another type of rock. I give the example of, see, while going to from Dharwad, Kitur, then to Belagao, just after crossing the Kitur, till we have a rock called Greywack. After crossing from Kitur to Belagao side, we have some few kilometers away from, we have a basalt like. This is clear rock contact and visible spectral or satellite image. And these are the potential area for groundwater occurrence. See, this is one type of rock, this is another type of rock. Water do not cross this boundary because basalt is a very poor permeable rock, whereas Greywack is a porous permeable rock. And this we have used to understand potential zone of groundwater. Thus, such kind of features, sudden change in the lithology, sudden contrast in the energy could be due to a lowland, highland, elevated land, or a perfect straight course of a river. All these are do could be lineament control, and there are they are potential for groundwater investigation, groundwater occurrence, potential zone, etc. Yes. Friends, so far we have discussed about the satellite image, their application. We remember satellites are located 800 kilometer, 8000 kilometer, but Photogrammetry, we operate at 1500, 3000 meter, not beyond that. Not several, 300, 3000 meter means, means 3 kilometer, that's all. Not 3000 kilometer. So, satellite data operates at several thousand kilometer, whereas photogrammetry, we operate at several kilometer, that's all. So, this is another different technique of understanding Earth's surface features and then make use of that for understanding this. In this, we try to make use of photos, directly take the photograph of the ground, not the sensors. We have sophisticated instruments which were sending the energy in the electromagnetic spectrum range. We are able to sense them, collect them in the sensor and we are processing that was satellite technology. Sensors we were dependent. Sensor is nothing but the energy emitted in a spec particular spectral range we are able to capture. We are able to sense. Whereas here, directly photograph of them, that is optical instruments. We use, this is a different technology altogether. To certain extent, it resembles, there is a commonality, but technology and interpretation, a different approach is required, photogrammetry, we call it. We take photograph of the ground. There are two types of a photogrammetry. One is a terrestrial photogrammetry, another is a aerial photogrammetry. Terrestrial photogrammetry, as I said, if camera we keep, the axis of the camera is perpendicular to the ground, I am able to capture the ground condition. This is aerial photogrammetry. Whereas in case of terrestrial photogrammetry, if this is the land feature, the axis of the camera is <coughs> parallel to the ground. Aerial camera perpendicular, terrestrial camera parallel to the ground. If I keep this vertical, I will not able to capture anything. If I keep this horizontal, I am not able to capture anything. Therefore, camera is mounted on the ground, axis of the camera is a horizontal, I am able to capture certain features of the ground. This is a terrestrial photogrammetry. Example, I have a <coughs> one ancient building, architecture purpose. I have to displace them and re-establish them elsewhere. K 
keeping exactly original the orientation say i have a, a temple like this this area is going to be submerged i have to keep the temple here i cannot change the position where exactly original pillar it should come there its the orientation it should be exactly oriented similar way in such cases architecture work i take several photographs of this of this temple uh, like this then orient them take them to next place use those to rebuild the structure exactly looking into the same picture so this kind of application in terrestrial photogrammetry is important but aerial photogrammetry has a different type approach similar to that of satellite image but in a different way therefore now we are all concerned with the civil engineering very rarely or less with the architecture so our main aim is to understand the ground condition for construction or defense or smart city or many others purpose we focus more on aerial photogrammetry yes this is an example of an aerial photograph so what exactly how exactly aerial photograph looks like it's a gray scale today even color photogrammetry is a possible okay this is aerial photogrammetry what we have the data provided when exactly this data is a capture that we call date of the capture and photograph has the fudicl marks this help us to develop my own coordinate system when i connect this i get a center now we i can have here to here here to here the distance here to here distance if a particular object is here now with respect to this 1.5 cm from here 2 cm from here wherever they intersect this is the point that is the coordinate of say 1.5 and 2 this define the coordinate of this system this i can make use develop and for making use of quantitative measurement from the photograph this is the principle of a photograph so what else we have this is the principal point where when i draw fudicel mark to fudicel mark they intersect so this is the project number for which project we, for any specific project we have all those details are provided and they are important information for my further study and application no there are several factors that influence the aerial photogrammetry and its application i have to keep in mind similarly for satellite image i have the spectral resolution or radiometric temporal resolution etc spatial resolution etc or true color phase color panchromatic image what are those all those i have similarly here also certain factors i have to remember what are those scale of the photograph that determines we will understand it later the aerial camera well, how exactly scale means whether the scale is 1 is to 250 1 is to 350 1 is to 500 1 is to 1000 that is one it depends on something aerial camera whether this is a space craft camera is held vertical or camera held inclined therefore this is the ground i am able to map this is the ground i am able to map if this is the able to map the features on the ground slightly differs yes whether how exactly aerial camera i have tested aerial films how exactly the data i have captured flight direction if this is a flight direction this is a flight direction that is very important i get just a photograph i have series of photograph then whether it was flying this direction flying in this direction how do i know unless that is known i will not able to understand the features on the ground because something associated with the flight direction 
time, which time of the day? Because I have something great, sun is here, illuminating better. When sun is here, he may not be illuminating better. How that object looks like depends on the shades. It is ultimately, therefore, sun, time of the survey is very important. And plus season, rainy season is something, winter is something, summer is something, brightness of the ground because of available solar energy something and atmospheric conditions. There are certain wind, plane may not able to keep directly its line get deflected. The plane moving in this direction get deflected because of the wind effect. And my accordingly the ground I have photographed little differs. I have some complexity arises. Therefore, atmospheric conditions under which I have mapped that is also very important. There is a rainy season, windy days, etc. So, do have all these important factors in the interpretation. Now, classification of the aerial photograph, based on this I can classify. Now, these are all important input for interpretation. There are different criteria to classify aerial photographs. One is the scale. Second is the tilt angle, whether the camera is held vertical or camera is a tilt, the tilt angle, whether the tilt angle, high angle, low angle. The angular coverage of depends on this. If this is the ground, if the same thing, if like this, a large area is covered. So, that angular, then a type of film I have used for this, spectral bands, especially for multicolor. So, depending upon this criteria, aerial photographs can be classified, yes, vertical, inclined camera then. Then depends on the scale. Yes, a large scale between 1 is to 5,000 to 1 is to 20,000 or medium scale 1 is to 20,000 and above or small scale 1 is to 50,000 like that a different scale. While interpretation of that photograph I have to keep in mind because can a water body look so small? depends on the scale. I must remember, I cannot jump immediately. This is water body. Whether pond or a lake has a different dimension. So, scale I have to keep in mind. Just because of a rectangular, I cannot jump into conclusion that it is a playground or something like, like that or circular. I cannot say just football ground or cricket ground like that school playground is different than the cricket uh, or uh, uh, stadium or something circular. They have a school playground more or less rectangular shape. Small agriculture when non-season also look like that. I have removed all paddies. It's a dry season, nothing on the ground. And these are all motor rectangular. If there is a nearby ground, whether I interpret this as a school and uh, school ground or this is my house and this then I have to consider other things also. Therefore, these matter in the interpretation of aerial photographs. Yes. What is exactly the scale of a photograph? Now, we will discuss them in detail, the scale of the photograph, whether this for vertical photograph, tilted or inclined photograph, this varies. Scale is one important factor which determines and I have to burn in mind what exactly the scale of the photograph while its interpretation is involved. For example, what is the scale? We know map distance into ground distance. If map distance 1 centimeter, it may represent 100 meter on the ground. 1 is to 100 we say. 1 centimeter, 100 meter, 1 centimeter equal to 100 meter, say. 
correct so map distance generally in centimeter ground distance generally in meter therefore 1 centimeter equal to so much of a meter we say that is the scale we shall arrive the scale now in this figure if we consider this as one triangle this as another triangle i repeat this is one triangle this is another triangle perpendicular similar triangles yes now how we will arrive the scale in these triangles say it is in the figure it is k a k a is the map distance capital k capital a is the ground distance map distance divided by or into ground map distance into sorry divided by ground distance or map distance to ground distance gives the scale of the photograph or the scale is map distance and the ground distance that gives the scale now in this triangle we see in triangle o small k a o small k a and capital o capital k capital a o k a we have k a upon k a that is the scale map distance divided by ground distance that gives the scale that's equal to similar triangle principle we know o k o small k divided by o k what is small k this corresponds if this is the photograph is central this is the focal length of the camera so focal length of the camera is one important factor which i must know to understand scale of the photograph okay ok is f now o capital k what is that what is capital k if this is the flying height i have an instrument or plane is carrying camera this is the flying height that is mentioned with respect to sea level flying height is mentioned with respect to sea level to say that is a capital h whereas if the ground in that region may be elevated for example say darwad belgaum mysore say sea level is zero with respect to sea level darwad may be 560 meter belgaum may be say 700 meter or mysore may be some other matter means with respect to the ground with respect to sea level the ground elevation may be different okay that is the ground where exactly i am taking the photograph i am taking the photograph of malaprava reservoir catchment and surrounding region saudat hills or like that hills they have some elevation the ground so that is the ground so small h correspond to that okay therefore okay is a f focal length o k is a this h that is the flying height elevation and this is a ground elevation so h that gives this so ok is h minus h where h is the height of the exposure from from where we have taken the photograph with respect to sea level that is h is elevation of the ground therefore scale is equal to f upon h minus h this is the scale of a photograph friends if ground is like this what is the h what is small h what is small h what is small h the small h varies with respect to sea level therefore the scale of aerial photograph is not constant it varies with the terrain terrain control is important factor when i arrive a scale to understand an object here on the photograph and when i reach this part of the photograph and try to understand that object the scale differs here what i have called a small field here it may be a small ground scale differs misinterpretation possible
therefore in a given scale it looks large but in the larger scale it different scale it may look small so it should not affect my interpretation therefore i have to be careful about the scale now we have studied what is the scale scale of a photograph is focal length divided by the flying height divided uh, minus the altitude of that point on the ground it means i must know what is the ground condition what is the flying height what is the camera then only i will able to understand the scale so what is now flying height i have to decide upon at what elevation i am flying and what is the ground condition i must know i must know h and h then the camera i am going to use then only i will able to find the scale friends just now i have showed elevation if where is uh, the ground condition i have shown zigzag line here i have made it more simple say for example like this is one point say like this this is another point say like this how the scale is varying i will try to show yes now friends let a and b be the two points on the ground lying at a different altitude okay now the scale of the photograph at h scale of the photograph h for point a for point b is different that we want to show now from similar triangles o a k o a k and o capital a and capital k a similar triangles capital o k a we have a k over a capital k a this is the map distance this is the ground distance that gives the scale now what is a k what is a k and from similar triangles we have o k upon o k a correct now o k is a more summary okay so yes a k a a k a this a refers to this k this a corresponds to this k okay now here it is called this is f this is h minus capital h minus h a h a therefore f upon h minus h a h a means this side correct similarly in triangle o k b and o k b and b we have k b upon k b capital b that gives k this b gives map distance and the ground distance that gives the scale and what is this o k and o k b in the previous case o k a now it is o k b o k is f and this o k b is capital h minus small h b this one so this is h minus h b h b is this one this minus this gives this one that is therefore we have f divided by h minus h b h minus h b now you see here scale is this is f divided by h minus h b is the scale here scale is scale is f divided by h minus h a both are different thus scale of a, a photograph varies from 
point to point depends on the terrain. What is the message? Message is I have to consider if there is a variation in the terrain, complicated terrain. I have complexity in the interpretation as well. At every point, the scale changes. On the other hand, if I have a uniform ground condition, Yes, scale more or less remains the same. Therefore, this method is more useful if I have a terrain of more or less flat or complicated terrain. My complexity varies. I have to keep in mind this while interpretation. Yes, we shall try in a problem example. A vertical photograph was taken at an altitude of a 1200 meter above the MSL, mean sea level at above this 1200 meter, the capital H is a 1200 meter above. Determine the scale of the photograph for a terrain lying at an elevation of 80 meter. This point is 80 meter above the ground, small h is 80 meter. If the focal length is a 20 centimeter, focal length is given. Now, scale equal to f divided by h minus h. We have just now derived. f is given, h is given, small h is given. Therefore, scale equal to f that is 20 divided by h that is 1200 meter minus 20. That is, we get that is 1 is to 5600. Zero, zero. This is the scale centimeter and in meet. This you can interpret. So, this 20 centimeter equal to this much, I may get meter that I have converted into 1 is to so much. This is the scale of a vertical photograph flying at this altitude. We shall try one more problem. Now in this a camera having focal length of 20 centimeter was used to take vertical photograph for a terrain of average elevation 1500 meter. What was the height of the aircraft from MSL if the scale was like this? We have scale is given. In the previous case, we wanted to find the scale and elevation of the ground was known. Here, elevation of the ground, see, known, but Flying height is not known. In the photograph, if that is missed, how do we indicate that flying height? The simple solution, scale 1 upon 800 meter, I have converted 1 centimeter, this also I have converted to centimeter, 1 upon 8000 equal to, that is F, this is, sorry, this is scale, this is F, 20 centimeter that 20 centimeter I have converted into meter because other or uniformity let us have. So, this is also in meter, therefore also we shall have. Now, 20 centimeter I have converted them into meter, h is the flying height, I have to find out in meter, 1500 meter is in the ground at that point. So, I get h minus this one bring this here, this I have, this become 0.2 and this into 8000, therefore h is equal to 1600 meter plus when this goes that side. Here it is minus, now I have brought this 1500 this year, therefore h is 1600 plus 1500 that gives 3100 uh, meter. So, friends, we will make use of this how if a terrain is varying we will try to find out friends we have seen two problems in the previous problem we were asked to find a scale here now we are asked to find the flying height now slightly different we have now we see what is that a line a b of 200 meter long lying at an elevation of 500 meter above msl what is that the h small h is given the length of that line is given okay above msl measures 8.6 centimeter this is the maps distance this is the ground distance in a photograph 
the focal length of the camera was used 20 cm f is given determine the scale of the photograph at an elevation of 800 meter means the second i have shown you how with the elevation of the ground the scale of the photograph varies first i have to find the scale for here now you see 8.65 cm on the photograph divided by 200 2000 meter on the ground that gives the scale map distance into the ground distance that's equal to focal length divided by flying height that is so much flying height i have to find out from this and then at that point the ground elevation was 500 meter therefore h minus 500 equal to 8 point this gives so 20 into 2000 this goes down 8.6 this moves here below and this comes here like this so we get a capital h of say h minus 500 is 4624 therefore capital h that is flying height is this plus this 500 meter that is for that the 8.565 is and 2000 for that scale this is the flying height means the scale at this elevation this is the scale for at this elevation and the flying height now for the point two different points this is one point this is another point say this is at 500 meter we got the we have the scale we determined the elevation or flying height now flying height do not change at this point only ground elevation changed therefore accordingly the scale changes what is that now the scale of a terrain at this elevation this was 500 meter above msl this is 800 meter above msl the scale at 800 meter is focal length this is the capital h flying height minus the ground elevation at that point therefore 1 is to 216 meter now this scale is different from this because of the terrain condition friends we have understood how terrain condition determine the scale of the photograph now keeping this in mind we have to understand the photograph aerial photo interpretation we shall try